Let us now talk about exchange of gases. During uh, breathing, oxygen uh, rich air uh, reaches the alveoli and that is where the exchange starts. An exchange of gases takes place at two levels. So we classify it as one pulmonary gaseous exchange which is between the air and the blood or alveoli and the blood vessel and the second is going to be at tissue level. So one is pulmonary exchange or it is also known as external respiration. The second one is tissue level exchange or which is also known as the internal respiration or internal gaseous exchange. Before we take up the exchange of gases, we need to understand a term called partial pressure. Partial pressure is expressed by the abbreviation PP and it is defined as the pressure exerted by a gas in a mixture of gases irrespective of the concentration of other gases. So, when we write the definition, it's going to be pressure exerted by a gas in a mixture of gases irrespective of concentration of other gases. So every gas in the mixture that is in air is going to have some partial pressure. Now let us take the partial pressure of the air which we breathe in and then the partial pressure of air or different gases in alveoli. Why we need to understand these two things is for a specific reason. The air which is taken in, it, it would be called partial pressure in inhaled air. The air which we take in and we are talking about the two main gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide. The partial pressure of oxygen in the inhaled air is 159 millimeters of mercury and of carbon dioxide is 0 0.3 millimeters of mercury. The air, when it comes into the alveoli, we call it alveolar air. So this was partial pressure of gases in inhaled air. The air here would be called alveolar air. So partial pressure in alveolar air. And why this, these two are going to be different is the reason we talked about anatomical dead space. Out of 500 milliliters of air that we inhale during normal breathing, which is known as tidal volume, it is only 350 milliliters which is reaching up to the alveoli. Some air, it remains in the respiratory tract, that means all those tubes. After we exhale, again there is some gas which is or air which is remaining into this tube and the gaseous exchange is taking place. That means when this fresh air enters, it mixes with the air that is already present in our uh, respiratory tract and that gas or that air has more of carbon dioxide because exchange is taking place continuously and less of oxygen. So when this mixes with that air which is normally termed as foul air, actually it is not foul, it is having more of carbon dioxide, less of oxygen. That is why the partial pressure changes. The partial pressure of oxygen, it is written as PO2, this also is PO2 and PCO2, is 104 millimeters of mercury. The air which comes in has 159, PO2 that is partial pressure of oxygen is 159 millimeters of mercury. But 
when it mixes with the less oxygen containing air in the track, now the overall partial pressure is 104. Similarly, PCO2 that is partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The air which we inhale has less carbon dioxide but when this mixes with that air in our respiratory tract which is having more carbon dioxide here PCO2 comes to 40 millimeters of mercury and that is why there are two values which we need to understand. Partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in inhaled air is different than or as compared to partial pressure of the same two gases in the alveolar air. That means when we are taking in the air, it has more of oxygen, less of carbon dioxide. When it comes to the alveoli, this air mixes with the air which is already there in our respiratory tract. This air which is in the respiratory tract is having less oxygen and more carbon dioxide because when it was there, gaseous exchange was continuously taking place. And that is why the PO2, the partial pressure of oxygen comes down to 104, whereas PCO2 increases to 40 millimeters of mercury. So these are two values which we have to keep in mind. Here, air would be termed as inhaled air and once it comes here, we would call it alveolar air. Now, let us understand how this gaseous exchange is taking place at these two levels. To understand this exchange, we'll draw a schematic diagram which can explain uh, the various places where this exchange is going to take place. This part is going to represent the circulation of blood. And here is the lung that is alveoli and here we will talk about the respiratory gaseous exchange at the tissue level. So this is at tissue level or which one we call as internal respiration and this is at the lung level which is known as the pulmonary or external respiration. This is the circulation and here the blood is going to go through the chambers of heart and we are drawing only those chambers which are associated with that particular exchange. So this is how we will draw this and once we start moving this blood or see how this blood moves, we will add the labels. This structure which we have, this is an alveolus or we can say these are the alveoli. We have already seen that in the alveolar air, partial pressure of oxygen, PO2, is 104 millimeters of mercury and PCO2 is equal to 40 millimeters of mercury. This we have already seen and how these numbers are different from the inhaled air that also we have understood. The blood which comes to the lungs that is deoxygenated blood. So blood which is coming here is in this direction is deoxygenated. And deoxygenated blood is brought by pulmonary artery. So this is pulmonary artery which is bringing the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So here we will write pulmonary artery bringing deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated means it is also having ox some oxygen and carbon dioxide. So that oxygen would also have partial pressure and partial pressure of carbon dioxide also. As it is deoxygenated, that means because it is coming from the tissue level, this oxygen has been used up, most of the oxygen. But some oxygen always remains. This is 40 millimeters of mercury. Unit remains the same, but we are just writing the number here. 
So it is deoxygenated blood and the blood which is coming from the tissue would have more carbon dioxide which has diffused from the tissue. So here carbon dioxide's partial pressure or PCO2 is somewhere around 46 or 48. It depends how active the tissue is. Now there are two areas alveoli and blood. Alveoli have oxygen at a higher partial pressure. That is oxygen if you are talking of here it is 104 and here it is 40. So and gases diffuse from higher and we are talking about their higher okay so their higher partial pressure to their lower partial pressure so oxygen is going to diffuse from higher partial pressure to lower partial pressure this is one place where ex exchange of oxygen is taking place and it is always going to be from higher to low this oxygen will be uh, either some part would get dissolved in a plasma, maximum part is going to bind with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. And now, because of this oxygen diffusing in, PO2 is going to change. Here, the difference in the partial pressure, here it is only 40 and here it is 104. So, there is a difference of 64 uh, millimeters of mercury pressure difference because of which the oxygen diffuses in. Partial pressure of oxygen increases and it becomes 95-96 millimeters of mercury. We call this blood as oxygenated blood. What has happened is in the alveoli the air which is present has PO2 104 and PCO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury. The blood which comes to the alveoli is deoxygenated blood. It is brought by pulmonary artery. Deoxygenated blood has low PO2 and high PCO2. Oxygen diffuses from alveoli that is high PO2 to low PO2. And partial pressure of oxygen now in the blood increases. Let us also talk about carbon dioxide. The blood which is coming here has carbon dioxide partial pressure is 46 whereas the air which is in the alveoli has PO, PCO2 as 40. Again carbon dioxide is going to diffuse from its higher partial pressure to its lower partial pressure that is from the blood to alveoli and PCO2 is going to decrease. It will come to around 40, 42 approximately that value. The blood which is here now is oxygenated. This is here. It is oxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood from the lungs is brought to the heart by pulmonary veins. So this blood vessel which we are showing here is pulmonary vein. And pulmonary veins open in the heart on the left hand side. So this is the left atrium. From le left atrium the oxygenated blood is going to come to left ventricle and oh sorry, left ventricle and from here this oxygenated blood will be carried through aorta to various organs. So the blood which is here has PO2 95 and PCO2 40. This is again oxygenated blood. It comes to the tissues. Tissues are active and they are continuously using oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide. So at this level PO2 is very less. Because they have used up all the oxygen. And as we said, depending upon the activity of this uh, tissue, the PO2 would vary. Suppose we are talking about very active tissue. So PO2 say is 20 millimeters of mercury. And because it is active, 
PCO2 is going to be high. Say it is around 58 millimeters of mercury. These values are different at different tissues and that is why when we read various books, these values would change. This value is not going to change. That is PO2 as 104. This is going to be constant. Here, if the tissue is less active, the value would be different. If it is more active, it would more, use up more oxygen. Again, the blood which is here, PO2 is 95. PCO2 is about 40. Gases, as we say, they diffuse from their higher partial pressure to their lower. Oxygen's partial pressure here is more as compared to the tissue. So oxygen diffuses into the tissues. And here carbon dioxide is more. So carbon dioxide is going to diffuse from the tissue to the blood. This is again gaseous exchange at second level. That is tissue level. Here it was at the lung level. Here it is at the tissue level. Now when this gaseous exchange takes place, PO2 will again reduce because all that oxygen is going to diffuse from the blood to the tissue. This PO2 comes to 40 and from the tissue carbon dioxide has diffused into the blood. So PCO2 becomes 46, 48 approximately the same. This blood has again become deoxygenated. And this deoxygenated blood is brought into the heart by superior or inferior vena cava. So this blood vessel is vena cava. These are the main uh, blood vessels which are bringing deoxygenated blood from the various body parts into the heart. And vena cava they open into, so if it is coming from here, this chamber is going to be the right atria from here the deoxygenated blood would come into the right ventricle and from right ventricle it will be taken by this pulmonary artery to the lungs. The deoxygenated blood having less of oxygen more of carbon dioxide it is the same blood which is coming to the lungs again. Fresh alveolar air comes in again it would have high PO2 104 as compared to the blood and oxygen from the alveolar air would diffuse into the blood. From deoxygenated it will again become oxygenated, will get transported, again exchanged at the tissue level, again coming back to the lungs. So the gaseous exchange is taking place at two levels. One at lung level which we call, so at lung level or pulmonary level we call it external respiration and second is at the tissue level which we call internal respiration. This is how these respiratory gases move and two places where exchange takes place. What we have to remember is exchange is always from higher partial pressure of that particular gas to its lower partial pressure. Everywhere we have seen that the movement is from higher partial pressure to lower irrespective of what is the concentration of the other gas. Alveolar air has more oxygen, less carbon dioxide. The blood which is coming here is having less oxygen, more carbon dioxide. So oxygen diffuses into the blood, carbon dioxide from the blood into the alveol. And that is why when we exhale, that exhaled air contains more of carbon dioxide which has come into the alveoli. Oxygenated blood goes to the heart. From the heart, it is pumped to the various body parts, exchanged again at the tissue level. Again, blood vessel takes it to the lung, uh, sorry, to the heart. From the heart, sent to the lungs for gaseous exchange. So this is how the gaseous exchange takes place. Now after this we will talk about how exactly these gases are transported through blood.